Now, there are many amazing things about the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, and therefore there are many amazing reasons why you should consider getting yourself a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. But quite frankly, that doesn't mean that they're the perfect breed for everybody. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you a few reasons why actually you should consider not getting yourself a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Number one, they come with a reputation. Once upon a time, the ancestors of the Staffy were involved in England's blood sports, which entailed fighting to the death with giant megafauna like bears and bulls, as well as with each other. To meet these needs, these dogs were bred with extreme aggression, relentlessness, and jaws that just won't quit. Nowadays, there's little evidence of these once characteristic traits in the sweet-natured nanny dog's temperament. But they still look quite like their bully ancestors. Their beauty is a real burden because strangers, friends, spouses, and family members quite often see them as nothing more than fighting dogs. And as a result, will distance themselves from your dog and by extension from you. They might be about 200 years off in their estimation, but stigma has a way of setting its roots deep in people's perceptions of the world, meaning that even a thorough history and synology lesson, as well as the evidence of the living, breathing angel who naps on your feet, will do little to shift this perception. So, if you're not capable of accepting that some people will hate your dog, on sight and forevermore, then you should perhaps opt for another family classic uh, like one of the Retrievers. Everybody loves a Goldie, nobody hates a Lab. The same can't currently be said for bullies and probably never will universally be said. Number two, they are demanding. Staffies are well known, in this country at least, for being exceptional family dogs. They have this reputation for good reason. Gentleness, goofy personalities, and an undying love for their humans define their breed characteristics. However, what they also come with as family dogs is a great deal of neediness. That neediness comes both in terms of physical exercise, but also in terms of cognitive and emotional demands. Staffies need to blow off steam with a couple of hours of exercise and play. They need to occupy their brains with challenges and work throughout the day. And they need their humans around a lot, to kiss and cuddle and basically worship. What that means for the average full-time worker is that their staffies are destined to be unhappy, because you're destined to be out of the house for at least eight hours of a day uh, for a typical shift. If you're unable to work at least partially from home, or dedicate your entire evening to your pup, or have someone at home for them maybe half the working day as company, then you might want to go for a slightly more independent breed or one that might sleep the day away in your absence, like an English Bulldog or a Basset Hound. They are not without needs of their own, but compared with the Staffy are a walk in the park, which incidentally is all they need in terms of physical output. And number three, their drive is not wholly dormant. Hundreds of years of very deliberate breeding practices, starting as soon as blood sports were banned in 1835, have meant that the fighting dogs of the 17th and 18th centuries have been softened and mollified so much that all that remains is the broad muzzle and bold muscle to remind us that they once killed for a living. However, Due to the continuation of dogfighting in secret and in other countries now, there remains living DNA that contains traits of ferocity in the bully world. And what's more, to make a breed a breed, it needs to retain its terrier personality and fearless countenance, meaning that at least some sign of the original fighting dog is alive and well in every staffy. It will rarely be exposed or become necessary, but it's there and any dog that can be pugnacious and is equipped with the sort of jaw power that could bite through another dog's skull while like a knife through butter is a potential liability. All powerful breeds, whether or not there's a distant history of provocation and confrontation, need a loving leader to guide them. So, if your ability to socialize, gentrify, and obedience train your dog isn't a high level, then you might prefer a less powerful dog like a Maltese. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you love the Staffordshire Bull Terrier as much as I do, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like the video, because we can't wait to see you here on the next episode.